the Eligu Saturn Ultra 16K. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, I've already reviewed the Saturn IV Ultra back in April 24, so I was very surprised when Eligu sent me one to review a few weeks ago. But actually, it wasn't the same printer. This is a 16K version, and this is a little confusing. Why the S4 Ultra 16K and not a Saturn V? I've no idea why Eligu has resisted a name change. I can only imagine that they're holding back the Saturn V name for something different. So as I'm easily confused at the best of times, I'll try and review this as a separate product. But I'm going to be referring heavily to the previous 12K version. To begin, the Saturn IV Ultra 16K is an attractive mid-range printer with a build height of 220 mm but with a very slight reduction in width and depth. It still has a flip top lid which is great as I've grown to love these but the R&D department still hasn't quite figured out how to manufacture a lip or handle for easy one-handed opening. When I mentioned this in my previous review a few viewers wrote in saying so what? You can just make your own handle. One even wrote in saying, absolute rubbish. It can be opened with a single finger. Well, as to the first, the handle not being there wasn't about my ability to come up with a solution. It was a statement of concern. In my opinion, this is a strange and foolish thing to overlook. As to the second, yes, I could also open it with one finger, but I'm just glad there's no resin in the tray. Otherwise, we'd have one hell of a sticky mess. In my case, Eligood remedied my previous criticism by sending me a lid that didn't quite close. This meant I could easily get my fingers under the lip. Fortunately, I'm pleased to say, this fault quickly corrected itself and after half a day of use, the hinges had worked loose enough to let the lid close properly. The build plate continues to be this funky, long-legged design which I previously described as self-leveling because, well, that's what Eligu tell us it is. Now I have had a few comments from folks saying that it isn't self-leveling at all and that I was actually misleading people. Well, I certainly try to never mislead anyone, but I'm not an engineer. Eligu tell us that their plate auto-levels. Certainly the Z-Arm uses a force sensor which, as the name suggests, allows it to feel the amount of force actively pushing or pulling against the plate. And this feature also allows the Saturn IV Ultras to detect resin levels and foreign objects that might potentially cause damage to the screen. So as I understand it, and I could be wrong, the arm determines a zero point based on an upper starting position combined with feeling for the screen using the force detector. The springs allow for a little wiggle room and, well, the process seems to work. What I do know is that I've had two of these now and in both cases they've worked perfectly straight out of the box. No paper or manual levelling was needed and so, from Eligu's point of view, it's self-leveling. Is it the best auto-leveling device in the world? I wouldn't think so for a moment, but for a consumer-based product, I think it's fair to say that it does seem to work. However, with that said, there's obviously potential for this feature to fail as there's an option within the menu to manually level the plate. The resin tray continues to be large, deep and metal but it does have a hidden surprise that I'll come back to in a moment. The plate attaches very securely to the Z-Arm with this clamp and the whole assembly rides smoothly on dual linear rails. There's still a camera spying on me from the inner corner of the enclosure, but the 16K camera is fitted with an LED to light things up nicely. This is, I believe, a 1080p camera giving us 1920 by 1080 pixels of resolution. Now I never managed to connect the 12K Ultra, but using G2 Box Basic Slicer, this time I was. This allows for remote monitoring of the printing process, which is a very handy feature. It also allows for time-lapse recording to bore your family and friends. 
However, just remember that these are actually features of the G2Box slicer. So if you use a different slicer, which you certainly can of course, then you might not get these features. The camera has artificial intelligence and can apparently watch out for warping issues or even an empty build plate and can alert you of these. The USB port, PowerPoint and switch are still located at the rear of the right hand side, but the Wi-Fi antenna has gone. The 16K Ultra does have Wi-Fi connection and I've witnessed but not recorded the unit automatically updating its firmware, which is a great feature. The user interface continues to be vertical, though we're seeing a little more color being introduced I think. Personally, I prefer a landscape aspect as this portrait style makes some of the text very small, which will impact some users, I think. However, as a whole, the UI is excellent, clear and easy to use. There's an ability to amend print speed from standard to fast, which I tested on the 12K version. It seemed to make very little difference then and it doesn't make any difference now. So enough said. The inbuilt calibration print tool is still there and continues to be an excellent feature that everyone else should emulate. Simply slice 4, 6 or 8 of your favourite test prints and copy these to the printer's memory. After that, you can change the settings on these and easily dial in the resin of your choice. The 16K still has the same tilt release design that cleverly peels the print from the FEP reducing all those nasty pulling and tearing forces that can cause print failures. Personally, so far, this mechanism has worked perfectly for me and it does seem to do what it says. Though whether this highly mechanical process will develop issues over time, I just can't say. The screen, of course, is a 16K with rectangular pixels giving us 14 by 19 microns of XY resolution. And given the pixels involved, this results in a staggering 1,713 pixels per inch, which is 300 higher than the Elegoo Mars 9K. I believe this is the highest PPI available at this end of the market, with the possible exception of the Uniformation GK3. But I can't comment on that one as they did send me one for review, but it didn't work and they've never bothered putting it right. But the biggest change in the Ultra 16K is this innocuous looking resin tray. It actually has a built-in heater. <laughs> yes folks, that's right. Eligu has finally introduced a heater to one of its printers. You don't have to turn this on of course, but as it's 12 degrees Celsius in my workshop right now, cold resin is like treacle, so a heater is a must. The system preheats to 30 degrees Celsius, which is a sensible temperature. Whilst warming, the plate descends into the resin and gently, but repeatedly, begins to mix it. Now this is obviously to encourage the resin to warm evenly, but it's still a nice feature that keeps the resin freshly mixed. After that, I believe the heater continues to kick in as necessary and strives to maintain a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. I have tested this with my trusty beer thermometer and sure enough it does seem to be the case, but I can't help but wonder why Eligu has dropped the temperature to 25 degrees here and not the same 30 degrees that was available at the initial preheating. It works for sure, but why this temperature difference? I would prefer the option to choose the temperature myself. I'd prefer the temperature to be 30 all the way across, or at least be given the option to choose this for myself. But maybe, just maybe, this is a firmware thing which will get sorted out in time. I certainly hope it is. Just like the 12K, the 16K has a power loss recovery feature. But regardless of this, the preheat option turns off with every click of the switch and also after every single print, which is very annoying. Again, I hope this is an easy firmware fix, as we expect these devices to remember our selected options and not to keep resetting themselves. Perhaps the biggest Achilles heel of the heating system is a point I deliberately ignored until now. 
Did you notice that the resin tray not only has a maximum resin level, but also a minimum resin level? There has to be a minimum amount of resin within the tray to prevent the heater from overheating and potentially damaging itself. Now I found that it took the best part of a full bottle of resin to reach the minimum level, which means for this printer, you'll always need two bottles of resin just to do some printing. Okay, this might not be much of a problem, but when you get a misprint, and at some point you will, this means you'll have a very full resin tray to empty. Yes, these poor spouts are well designed, but it's still a bit of a pain. With all that said, as heaters go, this is a very elegant solution by Eligu. There's no weird electrical connection points or cumbersome add-ons to make things work. If it wasn't for my trusty beer thermometer, I wouldn't even know it was working. But it does work very well, so nice job Eligu. Now there's still a slop tray, and I still hate it. But to help you prevent dripping resin everywhere, this flimsy device attaches ready for print removal. So how does it print? Well, as I needed two bottles of resin, and as I wanted to give the printer every advantage, I opted to use Frozen Aqua 8K. And these are the settings that I came up with. As briefly mentioned, as far as I'm aware, there's no restrictions on your choice of slicer. And it also seems that Eligu have created their own slicer now, which personally I haven't tested yet. For me, the Amelalabs Town test print came out beautifully. Without doubt, it's one of the best examples of this model I've personally seen. The open source ring got a bit battered on my tabletop, but it's clear that it's a gorgeous print, as of course are the Mephisto head and the Green Man ring. The quality of these seems so high, in fact, that anti-aliasing doesn't really seem worth applying, but for testing purposes, I have. I turned to our buddies at Archville and Games for something exciting to print, but to be honest, there were so many supports on it, I struggled cleaning it up, but the detail is clearly there. For a bit of fun, I also printed my Orc Hog Rider. So what do I think of the Eligu Saturn IV Ultra 16K? Well, actually, I liked the 12K Ultra, but I did call Eligu stupid for not including a heater in that version. As the 16K does have a heater, and a well-integrated one at that, I guess I should take that insult back. And I would have done, I really would have, if they'd put a proper lip on the lid. But it seems my other criticisms about the 12K have all been remedied, leaving me with little to grumble about. I'm hoping that the firmware fixes I mentioned above will be just that. Simple updates that this printer is more than capable of receiving and applying. If we look for a moment at Eligu's own comparison, we can see that the only differences between the 12 and 16K are the screen size, the heater, the light on top of the camera, and the removal of an exterior Wi-Fi antenna. And if we do a quick price comparison, there's $100 or £90 sterling difference between these models at the moment. And if you are considering buying one of these printers, please use the link in the description. Full disclosure, it is an affiliate link, and if you do make a purchase, your old mate Bogman may earn a few pennies. Now I've already said that the heater works very well, but is the 16K screen enough of an upgrade? Well, I was disappointed when Eligu fitted a 12K into the previous Ultra rather than a 14K, so obviously I'm a bit biased. I do love the detail that's on these prints, and there's absolutely no doubt that this 16K unit, with its staggeringly high PPI, produces some excellent quality prints. But if you're wondering whether you should buy the 16 or the 12K version, I would say that it literally comes down to whether or not you need a heater. Yes, I'm always going on about heaters, but unless the ambient temperature in your area is always in the mid-20s Celsius, then you need a heater. 
So if your climate is on the warmer side, well, you may well be better off saving a few pennies and buying the 12K. For the rest of us, the 16K probably makes that bit more sense. We really have reached a point now, it seems, where the quality of these prints is so good that even with the high level of magnification that I use, it's getting hard to see the differences in quality, particularly between this 12K and the 16K. Maybe now's the time for the industry to forget about screen size and concentrate more on realistic fast printing and improved resin safety. But anyway, this is a review about the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra 16K. And for me at least, there's absolutely no doubt that this is the best printer that Elegoo has produced so far. The prints are gorgeous and sharp. The print auto levels out of the box. Resin calibration is easy thanks to UI tools. The tilting mechanism continues to impress me. And above all, Elegoo has finally fitted a heater. They seem to be listening. Who knows? Maybe the Saturn V will actually have a handle. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave any comments and questions below. So take care and thanks for watching.